Welcome to Wheel Good Time, where the categories are made up and the points don't matter. Today's head-to-head-to-head -to -head -to -head competition is between the InMotion V11Y, the King Song S16, and the Bigode T4. The InMotion V11 has been in production for over three years now, and the V11Y has been well on its way, and InMotion has been working on perfecting this before they release it to the market. The Kingsong S16 was announced just a couple months ago, give or take, and it looks like it is going to be a direct competitor to the V11Y. Also, we have the Bigode T4, which has been out since late 2022, how do these three stack up against each other? Is the Bigode T4 still competitive when we have these two other offerings? Let's talk about it. The very first category is durability. I personally have owned the original V11 and the V11Y is very, very similar with basically upgraded inside parts. Unfortunately, the V11Y doesn't have a whole lot of durability improvements other than soft bumpers on the headlight and taillight and along the bottom part. I've actually had those bumpers put onto my V11 that I've owned, and it does provide a very small level of impact protection. But among these three, the V11Y has the lowest level of durability compared to the other two. And remember, if this is your very first EUC, Durability needs to be at the very top of your priority list because you will be absolutely thrashing your wheel and beating it up a lot as you learn how to ride. This isn't going to be the case so much when you're on your second or third or later wheels, but your very first EUC is going to get dropped and get a lot of scuffs and scrapes. So durability is very important. The current generation of Bigode T4 currently has metal battery boxes. This is really a huge improvement on the durability factor on this wheel. The T4 also has a pretty thick cushioned seat on top that's built in, but we're not talking about the seat right now. As far as durability is concerned, that thick cushioning on top really helps with impacts. The S16 also has metal battery boxes, and this is very highly polished. It looks really nice. As far as the battery boxes are concerned, Kingsong really wanted to make sure that this thing could take a hit. Unfortunately, on top, all we see is shiny plastic, and that is definitely going to be the first thing to crack if the S16 takes a tumble. The winner in the durability score goes to the Bigode T4. Our next category is power. The V11Y has the same 84 volt system that the V11 had, but now has a 2500 watt motor. The S16 has an 84 volt system as well, but the motor is 2800 watts. The T4 on the other hand has a 100 volt system and its motor is 2500 watts. Among these three, the T4 has the highest voltage, but the S16 has the most wattage on its motor. It remains to be seen which one is going to be more powerful and which one is more torquey. It very well could be a wash, it's hard to say. But either way, the V11 is dead last on this, and the tie for the most power goes towards the T4 and the S16. Our very next category is safety. The T4 has a pretty strong safety record with little to no unexpected cutouts and zero battery fires. The V11, on the other hand, has had some initial troubles where with the previous batteries that they were using, there were some battery fires. However, InMotion has changed the battery type, and so we don't have to deal with that problem anymore. InMotion has also changed the controller to a modified version of the Raptor controller that you see on the V13. We don't know the specifics on this one, and it's definitely not the same thing I really don't know if they're just using the term Raptor because it has a good reputation. It's really hard to tell what is marketing and what is actually substance. So I'm going to withhold my judgment on this. All we know is that it's a different and upgraded controller that should be able to handle more power. That's all we know really about the V11Y's controller. Additionally, the V11Y has a smart VMS, as does the S16. 
The only one that doesn't have a smart BMS is the T4. Beyond the smart BMS, we really don't know much about the safety features of the S16. So with that information in mind, the winner of this goes to the V11Y. The next category is suspension. The V11 suspension was the very first of its kind with 85 millimeters of suspension travel. It uses a proprietary air shock system that for the time was pretty good, but it still had some problems. Now with so many other options out there, it seems like the V11Y suspension is pretty antiquated. Compared to the S16 using a coil shock system, it really seems like the V11Y suspension is just not that good by comparison. The Bigode T4, on the other hand, has the longest suspension travel of 100 millimeters. The T4 suspension is pretty nice with the 100 millimeters of suspension travel, but unfortunately, the linkage is just not very good. It was very poorly designed. On top of that, the air shock that Bigode included with it was required to be pumped up beyond what it really should have been. And so it was very common for that particular shock to bleed air out or sometimes blow out if you go over and jump too hard. You are able to throw on a different shock, but we're judging these by out of the box performance, not what it potentially could be. The S16 suspension is very similar to the S19 and the S22 Pro, and that's a good thing and a bad thing. There's a lot of good things to say about those suspensions when they work. Unfortunately, they have also been plagued with issues with their sliders. You can get that rectified and order something better online, but again, we're judging this just by what you get out of the box. So as it turns out, none of these suspensions are truly perfect. However, the closest thing to perfection is going to be the S16. Our next category is outgrowth risk. This is a subjective feeling after you've already learned how to ride and now you want to get something bigger, better, faster, and stronger. What are you going to do with that wheel once you've outgrown it? These smaller wheels are really ideal for the trails in general. As discussed before, the S16 and the T4 have high quality suspensions and they're the most powerful of the three. So those will make very good trail wheels, but on top of that, the T4 already has a trail tire built in. Unfortunately, with the V11Y, there is an inside fender that is really, really close to the tire. And so it makes it particularly easy to get leaves and sticks and mud and other debris in there and really hard to clean it out. So among these three, the V11Y is the lowest rank among these three for trail duties after you've decided that you want something faster for the street. Because of all these things and the pre-installed knobby tire that's installed on the T4, the T4 wins in this category. Our next category is waterproofing. Let's just get one thing out of the way. The T4 has none. The S16 doesn't make any claims about waterproofing either. The V11Y on the other hand does make a waterproofing claim. They say it's IPX6 rated. I'm personally very skeptical about this because the V11, the original one, they claimed was IP55 rated, but they didn't have any data to back that. The V11Y makes the claim of being IPX6 rated, which is an improvement over their claim for the IP55 rating that was in the original V11. I'm personally very skeptical about that entire thing because the InMotion V11 was not waterproof in any way. I personally owned the V11 and rode it through one single rainstorm and the bearing was shot. So being IP55 rated means absolutely nothing. IPX6, I really want to know where InMotion got that rating data and how they achieved that so I can trust them. However, they are making the claim that it is improved over the original V11. So maybe the V11Y really does stack up. Maybe it really does have much better waterproofing. That remains to be seen. Considering that the T4 and the S16 don't make any claims whatsoever about waterproofing, and the V11Y does make some claim about it, 
I'm reluctantly giving the win in this category to the V11Y. Our next category is pads. The V11Y doesn't include any pads at all, but if you want to buy pads from InMotion, they'd be happy to sell you some. It's really hard to mount pads on the V11 because of its unusual design. But if you want to fork over some more cash and buy some fairing plates from somewhere such as Grizzla pads, you can get some nice fairing plates and then get your foot locked in properly. The T4 has pads that are built in and they're not adjustable, but it's nice that they have them. They also provide pretty good protection of the wheel in the event of a crash. When I tried out the T4's pads, I found them to be very uncomfortable. I don't really recommend them and would recommend getting different pads, but it is nice that they included some pads and those pads do provide a little bit of protection in the event of a crash. The S16 does include pads that look nice and rounded and pretty soft. They don't lock your foot in, but they do look fairly comfortable. The thing that I really like about the S16 though, is that if you want to put on aftermarket pads, there's a really nice, beautiful, flat surface that you're able to put on whatever aftermarket pads you want. That's a really nice touch, and I really appreciate King Song doing that. Out of these three, the pads category winner is the S16. Our next category is range. The V11Y and the S16 have basically identical battery capacities at about 1500 watt hours. The T4, on the other hand, has 1800 watt hours, a 20% increase over its competitors. This directly translates to how much range it gets, despite the fact that it has a higher voltage rating than the others. The clear winner of the range category obviously goes to the T4. Our next category is unique features. This is kind of a weird category, so I'm gonna be kind of all over the place. The T4 includes a seat that's built in. The T4 and the S16s both have screens that are built in, whereas the V11Y just has a small battery readout on top. The S16 has RGB lights throughout and some very loud speakers included. The S16 is the only one among these three that you can be a rolling disco party so you can irritate everyone around you with your taste in music. Now it's time for our conclusion. The S16 at Next Gen Mobility is only $1,750. The T4 is $1,800. We don't know what the price tag is gonna be on the V11Y. The manufacturer's suggested retail price was $2,200 when the V11 was released. With the V11Y, I expect there to be a slight price increase due to inflation and the additional features. I suspect this will be about 2300 to 2400 US dollars. No matter what, it looks pretty clear that the V11Y is going to be the highest priced out of all three of these. And it looks like the V11Y has the least amount of features by comparison to its competition, with the exception of the Raptor controller and the waterproofing. I'm not gonna say which one you should get and which one you should avoid because they all have their own strengths. The T4 and the S16 have good suspensions and good power. The V11Y has its waterproofing and its Raptor controller for safety. The T4 has a built-in trail tire. The S16 is a rolling disco party with loudspeakers and RGB lighting. The T4 seems like it's gonna have the most durability for a learner among the three, and it has the highest range. I can't say which one is the best, and personally between the three, I would choose the T4, but that's just me. Which one of these is the best for a learner is completely up to you and your priorities. Each one of these EUCs has their own unique strengths, and so I recommend every single one of them. Before you go, make sure you boop that subscribe button and check out this video right here. It's gonna tell you all about the upcoming EUCs that are on their way and some rumors. Check it out.